Welcome to our latest project, Sleepy Hollow Bed and Breakfast. And this is painted on a paper mache tombstone and it's got these wonderful gates that you can make it into a standing triptych. Okay, so you can just make it and so partially close and the gates fold flat for storage, which is wonderful as well. I'm just going to show you how to use a bunch of different mediums. Um, we've got our new um, media paints, which are a fluid acrylic and they glaze over things like nobody's business. And then we've got some new, um, these are embossing paste in the black and in the, the pearl, and I'm going to show you how to use those and then how to get this kind of rusted glitter gate look. It's a lot of fun and it's a very quick project I think you're going to enjoy. Whenever you're painting on paper mache, you always want to make sure to go ahead and seal it. Sometimes paper mache, if you get water on it later, um, it can wrinkle the surface or make it just a little bit less sensitive. So you want to use something that's going to seal that surface down because it is, after all, paper. And they are making paper mache these days much, much nicer. This has got some kind of inner board that's almost built like IKEA furniture. So it's not denty, so you can't really like make it, you know, warp and stuff. So that's a really big improvement. Normally what you would do is you might go ahead and use a big um, brush and brush on your um, sealer. And I'm using DecoArt Americana Multipurpose Sealer. It's my go-to sealer. But if you notice, you're going to be doing this for quite a long time. A quicker and easier way is to go ahead and grab one of these mushroom sponges and then move your stuff out of the way because then you are just doing a couple of big strokes and you're not going to work it so long and hard. Okay, so much quicker, much easier. You let this dry and then you can create and craft um, whatever you've got in mind. And if you notice, notice right here, it looks like I've got, you know, a little blemish happening here. Um, this will dry and that will shrink right back. So that's why, that's exactly why you want to go ahead and um, seal your paper mache. Okay, I tend to be in a hurry just a little bit. And so if you use these nylon painter's pyramids, then um, they will, they don't have any sharp edges on there and it's nylon so you, it actually won't mar your painting surface. So you can let it get air all the way around and it can be drying on all um, six sides or however many sides that is. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, my gates in lamp black and I'm going to do some kind of different effects with them, but I want to get them base coated first with my lamp black. I'm going to, I'm on my nonstick mat, we've got them in black and in tan. They both work the same, but what's neat about the nonstick mat is you can make a big fat mess and you can squirt it with some water. And I like the handy scraper because it's got rounded edges and it doesn't dig holes in my mat. And you just scrape your mess off and wipe it up with a paper towel. It takes off epoxy, um, hot glue, um, all of your, anything adhesive. It is just really pretty amazing stuff. Nothing sticks to this. So on that note, I'm going to base my gates so that that way they're all black. And so I'm going to use, this is an Italian sash brush. And you notice that instead of it being very, very stiff, which it does a pretty good job of being stiff, it has a little bit of give to it. So what that does for me is it allows me to get into these little cracks and crevices pretty easily. So the very first thing that I will get done is to go ahead and base inside all those little bits. That way it looks very professional. And you can kind of just rub or you can stipple, whichever works for you. But um, this is a really good brush for that because it makes pretty light work of a lot of area like this brush. And then do make sure that you smooth out the top because it'll have a kind of pebbly look because of how much paint you're putting on. Okay, I'm going to break out some kind of crazy stuff here. I'm going to give something a try. I don't know if I'm even going to like it or not. But I've got these um, embossing paste. This is glossy black. And then this is um, metallic copper. And let me show you my sample board. My sample board, this is how the copper is. It's super duper awesomely shiny. It is beautiful. And that gloss black is delicious. This is the silver or pewter, one or the other. And then this is pearl. And every stinking one of them are amazing. This is a crackle. And then this is a glitter I put on top. Glitter on top. So what I want is I want the shine. These are metal gates. They shouldn't be kind of matte like that. So I want a little bit of the black shine. But I want to try to create a little bit of copper rust kind of look. So I'm going to take some of my medium out. Keep my palette knife clean. I'm going to use a jumbo dauber. And then I'm just going to go on top the jumbo dauber and see about making it kind of shiny. And 
And then what I want to do is go in with a little bit of my copper. Okay. And I'm going to go into the copper. And then what I want to do is kind of create just a little bit of kind of glimmer here and there. And I'm not sure that I'm not going to need to go ahead and just palette knife that kind of on. Like old gates. It's amazing how um, nice and strong the colors come out. Then when I get that on there, so I think I like the palette knife better. Get up here to the top. scary. While it's wet, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of these. Um, this is the Encrusted Jewel Bronze Kit. And I'm just going to put some pieces of metal flake here and there. I think I might like the smaller size better. I want this to have that kind of eerie, ooh, what's going on kind of effect. Tap it off. Yeah, these big ones are too big for the detail that we have here. Yeah, clean it up when it dries. And then we'll go in with just a little bit of our black as well. Oops, hi, a little bit of black. Okay, we'll kind of see what look we have. Our, yeah, just that crusty kind of eerie stuff. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of drying time extender and I'm just thinking I wonder if I have a little bit of water in my brush but we're going to go ahead and add it anyway. Water and drying time extender don't get along. But we'll see. So what I want to do is keep the open time open just a little bit longer so that I can blend with my grays and stuff. And I want to do it wet and wet with the color down because if I have it wet and wet, then my colors will blend, which is better looking. So I'm going to pinch out my color out of my brush and smooth out this layer because I think I've got about a glom on there. Glom is a unit of measurement for paint. It's a lot. Okay, then we'll spit out some gray sky. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this big oval glaze and pick up some of our color. And I almost need to tape this thing down. I'm having to kind of hold on to it. All right. And we're going to slip slap into the middle area. It's a little bit wet, so things are moving a lot. Okay, I need paper towels. grabbing just a little bit better. Okay, so then we come out, wipe out our excess, and come over here and blend them together. Okay, so we're doing a series of little X's. And kind of make a little creepy Halloweeny color. And I'm not using any pressure at all to push on my um, project. Just trying to really keep it light. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the gray sky. Every now and again you can lay your brush down. And at some point we're only going to get so far with a wet and wet slip slap. But see what it did to our colors around the edges. It just really kind of give us a foundation. Okay, and I can walk out here. really like these little tombstones. They are just jazzy and fun. And I think with the gates, they just really add some kind of chowy. We've got the really big gates too, the ones that are like, um, I think they're like 30 inches tall. So you could do one of these and put it on your front porch. It'd be really, really spectacular. 
Alright, I'm going to go into a little bit of just the royal purple and just kind of dance that in this areas. You just not quite have it so purple or so blue. I'll dance that in and out. So see how nice and long that's staying open for me. Okay, now we could go on top of that purple with just a little bit of our gray sky. Just work that in. And if I wanted to, I could go to my edges with my blue and just really get a lot of this blended right from the get-go. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to let it dry. You can hit the blow dryer. Okay, we're going to mix a little bit of slate gray in with our purple to create just that really soft kind of purple color. And we're going to dry rub off on the paper towel very strongly. And now we want to start getting that kind of dreamy, spooky, night sky, ghosts and things are tumbling about, creating wanton terror and all that kind of garbage. Okay, so we're going to just pick up more. And so in this area where it's lighter, it's probably not going to show, but it is a good value for up here. It doesn't look too chalky. You can just have that kind of creep right off the edge. Okay, so we can come over here where things are. This smooths things out, allows movement. So we're getting a little S pattern here. Then we'll mix in with the gray sky and the purple. And we're looking for something a little lighter, so we might get just a little bit more of the gray sky. And so we're doing a dirty brush. And we'll test it here to see where it's going to show up. Okay, and it's a little bit too purple for me, so I'm just going to increase the value where this darker color goes. So what you do is you make a path of one color and then you go back and you can lighten that color. So over here. And what we're also doing is we're setting the stage for where we're going to put our letters. So we've got our stencil for our letters. And so we know that they're going to go here, 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 and whatever. And so what we want to do is we want to set the stage so like if this is going to be black letters then this area has got to be light. If these are going to be white areas I've got to keep that kind of dark. Um, it just depends on what colors you're going to use for your letters and I haven't quite decided yet. One thing at a time. Okay and then we'll go in and pick up some of the just gray sky. horseman. He's going to go you know, right there. He's got to be black, so we know that he's going to be in that really light area. Might want to sneak up just a little bit on this. Okay, now we'll go into white um, dirty brush. Just 
just increase that value. And magic cap. Once it's rubbed off, I can go up into my lighter or my darker areas. Okay, we're going to go into Lamp Black. And we're going to position our stencil. I laid my words over the top to make sure I had it in the right direction, in the right place. And we're just going to go ahead and fill this in. Now what I'm doing is I'm tapping on my paper towel. This is the most important thing about stenciling. And then you can get rid of some of your medium on the middle and then you're going to tap towards, I'm leaning my brush a little bit towards the middle and that'll prevent bleeding. And what I really want to do is just kind of see how good and dark my background is and I may lay it over and I may do some other things on top, but right now I want for color placement. I'm looking for that. Okay, so here's what it looks like with um, my horse on there and I think it needs to be much brighter around it. So I'm mixing white with a little bit of the royal purple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the area around my horse. And this is all about the horse. Okay, now we'll go into white. And specifically on my stencils and stuff, I'm using, and for this dry rubbing, is I'm using a domed um, stencil brush. And what this does for you is it's round and it's domed, and that means you're going to get a really good blend without any harsh lines, and it doesn't stick and poke and bleed under. So that's the appropriate brush to use. Picking up more white. And this dry rub technique. It's really important to have a dry paper towel and really remove excess paints. Okay, so yeah, right around him. See how that's like chow. Okay, so yeah, I'm liking how that looks a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to go into a little bit of Indian Turquoise Dirty Brush, and I'm going to see what happens with that. I think it can go out here on the outer outskirts. And just give that eerie kind of glow. I think the dry rubbing technique is awesome, except I hate that it eats up my paper towels. It definitely eats up my paper towels. But if you don't spend enough time rubbing the paint off, then you get very big surprises. So make sure you spend some time on, on the paper towel. Okay, so we're getting that kind of eerie. I want to make that just be a little bit smoother, not so polka dotty. go plus white. Ok, 
Okay, we're going to take our um, White Wonder Rake and we're going to thin our black paint and get a heavy handled something or another. Always test over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do snow in the sky, pointing our brush where we want the spatters to land. A little bit thinner. It's not quite falling the way I want it to. Now if you were painting the back of something, you would never want to turn this on your um, palette down here because it will mess up whatever's painted on the back side. So make sure you protect what you need protected and watch out for your neighbor's project. Okay, now we're going to add some white spatters. Now I'm going to anchor my, my um, palette knife and that's going to give me the ability to control where my spatters land instead of snowing everywhere because it's not a snow scene. And maybe down here will snow a little bit. some of that all over the place. Okay, I've got out some, uh, yeah, just throwing things in the paint. Um, quinacridone, magenta, and the media paints. I'm going to use a crescent brush. These paints are so lovely and transparent, and I think I want just a teeny bit of water. I want to move them around just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just kind of scumble in some of the areas and give some tints yeah, that's just really giving a nice glow. Ain't missing any of that up here. Doesn't need to be everywhere, I just want hints of it. What's neat about the media paints is they are transparent. I think we're going to go into the cobalt teal hue as well. And I just need a drop, a little dab will do that. I'm going to go into that with a little bit of water. And I've managed to keep my red in my brush. It's coming out a little bit red blue. Let's see if we can't. Slip slab and push some of this around. Yeah, increase the, the depth of that. So I can bring it out over um, the purple and it'll take on a hint of that color. I can take it over here on the red and that'll give it a hint of color. It's pretty amazing stuff. Okay, and it starts just giving it that kind of dreamy Thing. Okay, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to do him in the embossing paste or glitter him or whatever I'm going to do to him. So I'm still not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed through my painting. And when you're deciding on your colors, I've got out three oranges here. And if you look at it, you've got to consider, like this isn't a very bright orange, but if I put it on here, it might be just like screaming bright. This might be just a little bit too close to tone, so I've gotten out this medium color, which is persimmon. So always consider where you're going to put something um, when you're trying to decide on your colors. All right, so I'm going to straighten out my little pumpkin head here. And give him just a little, some orange, and we'll start seeing how other things interact. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move that and I'll put it back over to rebase coat. Okay, when you've got two pieces of pattern that are a little bit close together and you want to stencil them, then just use tape as a little bit of a mask. And then you won't make a mess. Okay, do 
Mm. And that's probably just a little bit on the dull side, so let me take out Hauser Light Green. We just got that one little splash of green, but I feel like it ought to be like the right color. Line that back up. Okay, that's just a little bit more visible. Okay, so we are going to go in with some Canyon Orange and our Crescent Brush. And we're just going to rub right in the middle, and that's not going to show, so I'm going to mix it with a little bit of saffron. And maybe we'll just go into saffron. And get some brightness going there, a little bit of depth. I'm going to go into our short bright brush, which is this little guy right here, and we're going to use the media paints. The media paints are pure pigment, so there's no filler, so they don't look cloudy. They're just really just color, and I'm going to use the Quin, Quinacridone uh, Burnt Orange, and I'm going to shade. See how vibrant that is? That's just amazing. Amazing, amazing. It's like, where have you been all my life? I just kind of want to take a bath in these colors. Okay, we'll go ahead and get it right up here. And then we'll get our eyes stenciled. All right, we're going to go ahead and put his face on. We're going to use saffron to do that with. I think we'll do a little drop shading as well to make sure that it stands out away from the face. I think, anyway. So I'm using the little crescent brushes to um, base coat, and that is going to help me control my paint. Okay, and lift. Da 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 da. Little scary face. I love it. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of the it's cobalt teal hue in the media paints and we're going to make some snorting snot breath come out of his nose, whatever they call that. I need to add a little bit of white to that, make it just a little bit brighter. And then I think we'll go into our, just dirty brushing this, into the saffron yellow. And I think we can have a little bit kind of a glow around our pumpkin. Bring it up into the sky just a little bit. Down below. Maybe we can increase that. Okay. Okay, I've stenciled the letters on with some gray sky. I want to just go ahead and get the letters on and see if they're going to show up in a gray or a light color and then I'm doing my drop shading and we'll see kind of what happens. So I'm just taking my round brush and I'm just stroking to the same sides of all the letters. And under. Okay, I'm not going to want to jazz up the lower letters too much, but I am going to go ahead. I've got them based in the slate gray. I want them to show up just a little bit more, so what I'm going to do is just kind of dry rub over the top of the letters. Maybe I'll actually put a little bit of teal down there too. And 
And so we'll go into our teal color and we'll just kind of scribble a little bit across the bottom. That's that cobalt hue. Give them a little bit different something, but not so much that it's like super obvious. Okay, yeah, that gives it just a little bit of that kind of belonging to the family. I'll take the round, a smaller round brush and do my drop shading. All right, we're gonna get out our black um, embossing paste and our heavy palette knife. We'll put some embossing paste on our palette and then we'll just pick it up and kind of pick it up kind of over the edge and then we are going to frost inward where we can from the edge. And where we can't, we'll fix it on the other, on the flip side if we need to. Oops. Staying within your stencil is good. And staying on the stencil, I'm all over the place here, is also good. Oops. Okay, and we can make it thick or we can make it kind of thin. And then the idea is, is you want to lift straight up. Got a little bit of tape there. Yeah, and that just gives it a wonderful look. I'm gonna go and wash my stencil off right away, but I do think that I might want a little bit of glitter. And so we'll do that while it's wet. Now you don't want to glitter, um, so you might varnish your piece before um, you put this um, this modeling paste on if you want to have a good coat of varnish. I personally don't think that the paint is going to be, like I don't think you have to varnish in this case because it's not a functional item. And then we'll tap off the excess glitter and I'll go clean up and get this dry so that I can do my letters. Okay, I've mixed a little bit of the cobalt blue hue into my pearlescent medium, and I'm going to attempt to do something crazy, which is what I always say when I get in trouble. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this down, and I'm going to apply to the lower parts of the letters with the tinted color. I'm gonna wipe that off, and I'm gonna go in the white part and do the upper and see if this makes any difference at all. And peel that off. Yeah, it kind of made a difference. Can you see it? And now I'm going to have to go wash my stencil. But I also think I might want just a little bit of this um, glitter mix to the tops of my letters. I'm just going to put it up there. Just sprinkle just ever so much down at the bottom. Not so much though. Okay, I'm going to pound that off into my glitter tray. Okay, and now I've got those kind of wonderful speckles in there and it's just kind of raised and it gives it just really cool dimension. 
Okay, I've got my letters done. I want to do the same with my little pumpkin face. I'm going to just use the pearlizing just to get something to glue onto. And then I'll use the gold glitter. Let's see how that will look. Well, I have to brush it off, but I'll have to get it dry first. Okay, I'm going to take my Indian turquoise and my flat brush and just skim a little bit of color on the edge of this glittered leg, just to give it a little bit of accent. Okay, so for a little bit of last touch, we're going to put a little bit of glazing at the top. You could do this earlier on um, as per the instructions. So we're going to just go ahead and use thalo turquoise in some places. And then we're going to go into dioxazine. And maybe kind of bring that down and in. And let the two colors kind of duke it out. And the neat thing is because these colors are so sheer, you are going to be able to just layer them over whatever you've done underneath. 